Good afternoon, everybody. It's a great day. College football has begun. <laughs> All right, so uh, remember our auction is Friday the 13th of September. And uh, these pieces of paper have the uh, website that you can go on online and already start bidding. You can bid online all the way up until 2 p.m. on the 13th, and then we will have paper bidding at the auction itself. So if you're coming to the auction, you don't have to have the app or anything. You can bid on paper like we normally do, okay? All right, so those that bid online, if nobody outbids them, they will they will win that item. All right, we are also in need of volunteers to help set up, decorate, help with check-in and check-out and clean-up. Well, not clean-up, we have people to do that. So if you're interested in, in participating in our auction, please contact the office. Perry School of Religion has taken registration for classes to begin on September 15th. Enrollment forms um, are available in the church, back there on the website, in the youth office. We are looking for more teachers and substitute teachers and youth group leaders. So please contact Kirsty Roberts if you're interested in any of these ministries. Our mutual self-help grief recovery group for adults will be starting October 1st. There's more information in the bulletin and uh, you can call the office and sign up for that. The Paul Vargo Memorial Golf Tournament is the week after the auction, September 21st, Saturday. Uh, there are only eight seats left for my trip to Rome, which departs April 23rd, um, right after Easter. And that trip ends on May 1st, but we have another extension, May 1st through the 8th, that will be a taste of Tuscany. So if you're interested in going to Tuscany and not Rome, uh, you can do that. Just let me know, okay? I don't have, they're still working on that trip. Um, there's 11 of us that are doing Rome that will also do a taste of Tuscany. It's gonna be less than $2,000, um, but then that's land only. All right, um, I think that's all I have. There's also, uh, Chris and Mike are gonna lead a trip to France and Normandy in the fall. Um, and that, there's pamphlets on the round table if you're interested in France and Normandy. And then uh, there's also Scotland and um, Northern Ireland um, in August of next year, okay? And that will be right before the beginning of football season next year. All right, do we have any birthdays? When is your birthday? The 22nd, happy birthday. Feliz cumpleaños. Are there any more? That's two days ago. Is that it? Anniversaries. Okay, anybody at home, if you're celebrating a birthday or anniversary, congratulations. We do have a, a big special birthday coming up in a couple weeks. Um, Jim Lucen back here is going to be 100 years old on September 2nd. So we're going to milk this out for two weeks. <laughs> we sing together number 813, God Whose Purpose is to Kindle. We're going to use the words for 813, 813, and the lyrics or the music will be Ode to Joy. La, da, 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 da. You, you'll catch it. So lyrics on page 813, <laughs> please rise. whose purpose is to kindle. Now ignite us with your fire. While the earth awaits your burning with your passion. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, in today's gospel, Jesus tells how many disciples who shocked at Jesus' words returned to their former way of life. For those times that we have failed to live according to Christ's teachings, let us seek his pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you satisfy our deepest longings. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods your father served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites 
in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of the state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Just cry out, the Lord hears and rescues them in all their distress. The Lord is close to the broken hearted, those who speak.
the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, live in love as Christ loved us. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present himself to the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as they do their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of Jesus' disciples were listening and said, this, is, this saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. In the first reading we hear from Joshua, the book of Joshua, Joshua is the leader of the people of Israel. He has succeeded Moses. Moses brought the people out of Egypt uh, and up into the promised land and he had to stop short of going into the promised land and jo uh, Joshua took them on in. After they'd been there for a while, he uh, brought all the leaders of the 12 tribes together. They had been living in uh, disparate places all over the place and living among different cultures and different peoples. And they had be begun to come under the influence of those cultures, many of them who were what you would call polytheistic or uh, idol-worshiping communities. 
and this was beginning to have an influence on the tribes of Israel. So he brought them in and, and placed before them a choice that they were to make. He says, you can either choose to worship those false gods, the lowercase g, or you can uh, worship the one true God. Now an idol is something that gets in the way between you and me and gets between us and God. It's something that displaces God or pushes him to the side, uh, either long-term or temporary. And this Joshua knew that this was going to be detrimental to the faith of his people, so he presented this choice to them. And he said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. He had made up his mind. And the leaders got together, and they came to Joshua with their decision, and they said, who are we to try to find uh, something else other than the one true God? He's been so good to us. He's led us out of Egypt. He showed us signs and wonders and been patient and loving this whole time. We also will serve the Lord. And Joshua couldn't have received a better answer than that. And if we jump ahead to the gospel, there's a similar situation in the gospel where you have a crisis of faith so to speak. Jesus has been teaching the bread of life discourse over, we've actually, this is our fifth week in hearing the gospel of John chapter 6, and Jesus in this gospel explains how he's leaving us his body and blood. He told the disciples, if you remember last week's gospel, my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. If you do not eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. And this was a very hard teaching for them to accept. Some of the disciples were murmuring about it. It was uh, a difficult one for them. It was a bit controversial, not only the part about that seemed like cannibalism, but they were always taught not to ever consume blood. All their meat had to be completely, the blood had to be completely removed from it. To eat blood was considered an, an affront against God, kind of like a blasphemy because blood was considered uh, what gave life to living creatures. So they turned away from God. They returned to their former way of life. A, a substantial number of them did. And they ceased following Jesus at that point, even though they'd seen all his miracles. And so Jesus turns to the apostles and says, what do you have to say? Um, do you also want to leave? And Peter immediately answers, Lord, whom else can we go to? You have the words of everlasting life. We, um, we've come to believe in you and come to be convinced that you are the Holy One of God. So that, again, was the right answer. Jesus, Jesus couldn't have asked for a better response than that. So what do these two stories have to do with me and you uh, in this time period? We're having a similar crisis of faith in the church today. It's been... Um, it's nothing new. It's been uh, several surveys over many years have told us that there's a large number of Catholics that do not accept this teaching of Christ, that he is present, uh, truly present in his body and blood under the appearance of bread and wine that we receive in Holy Communion. Apparently it's, uh, it's nothing new because it happened in Christ's time and he dealt with it then and we still have a little bit of a problem there. So what can I do? I'm just one person. Uh, this is a big problem in the church. Um, I tried my best to raise my kids in this way and my family and friends. We, we believe what we believe. There's many here that do believe very strongly and some that are having some difficulties with it. If you are having difficulty with that teaching, probably the best thing you can do is not walk but run to God and ask for his help. Um, ask him to give you eyes to see and ears to hear and that he would open your heart to understand this wonderful beautiful teaching on his sacrament that he gives to us everything God does for us is to help us and help us to be good and to do good and this sacrament is the king of all the sacraments I guess you could say and if you are already do believe um, you also can run to God as well and ask him to increase your faith and allow this sacrament to transform you as well from the inside out and to uh, be, be better for the reception of the sacrament. We could all probably do a little bit better job of um, 
being a little bit more presenting ourselves a little bit more worthily to receive the sacrament and being a little bit more reverent. That's some things we could probably work on. And also attending uh, Eucharistic adoration is a wonderful practice as well. We've been doing that for many, many decades here at St. Sabina. We have a long and strong history of devotion to the Eucharist in that way. And so I would encourage you to, if you can, come on the first Fridays, even if you can only come for a few minutes or if you can stay for a whole hour. It's a wonderful uh, experience. Jesus longs to be with us. He's hungry to be with his family, you and I. And we should also be hungry for him as well. And he is more than willing to feed that hunger within us with his body and blood in the Holy Eucharist. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. Let this household of faith present itself now before the Lord our God, praying to the one whose mighty deeds are known to all. For the church, that the difficult teachings of Jesus may not discourage Christians, but challenge us to ask for the grace to embrace the responsibilities of discipleship, we pray to the Lord. That God may deliver our world from its slavery to violence, setting the nations free to pursue reconciliation and peace. We pray to the Lord. For refugees and all those who are forced to leave their homes in search of safety and security, we pray to the Lord. For those in abusive relationships, may they find safety, communal support, and peace in their lives. We pray to the Lord. For all gathered here, may we find Christ's words to be spirit and life, and Christ's flesh and blood to be the source of life within us, we pray to the Lord. For those who served God in this life, especially Adriana Olarte Munoz, may they see Christ, the Holy One of God, we pray to the Lord. God of justice and compassion, your son Jesus brings us the words of eternal life. Grant us the grace to respond to those words, working to bring about your kingdom of love and peace. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. We sing together number 935, Draw Near, number 935. <laughs> Thank you. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we, we uh, acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your children. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign peace. of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We sing together number 925, All Who Hunger, number 925.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing together number 759, God Sends Us Forth, number 759. 